welcome to our January 25th meeting. All right. Um, open public meeting. On Wednesday, January 12th, 2022, notice of this meeting was mailed to the press in the current of Acorpa Township. Notice was also delivered that day to the Acorpa Township clerk and posted on the bulletin board in Township Hall. Roll call. Mrs. Bongiorno. Mr. Della Barca. Here. So the microphones can only be used at two at a time, so if your microphone is cued, just make sure you turn it off when you're not using it. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. Here. There it goes, very good. Mrs. Hyman. Here. Mr. Ireland. Here. Mr. Price. Here. Mr. Sebi. Here. Mrs. Sullivan. Here. And Mrs. Salaki. Here. Here. Okay. Like Sibler, please. Superintendent's report. Hey, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to our actually first business meeting of 2022. Um, I'm going to begin with the superintendent's report, where it encompasses what has happened throughout the last couple of weeks here in our new school year, and it's all classified underneath our student learning goals. So, under student achievement, we have lots of battles going on in our school district, some competition and challenges. Alder had a robot battle and there's battle of the pages going on at miller school and winter recess reading, reading challenges throughout the district our academy of law and business participated in the consumer bowl this month and the science league competition begins and we always have great results from our science league as a excellent excellent competition that goes on between the cape atlantic league school districts and um, we, we come out on top most of the time, so we're very, very proud of that. Stream projects going on in math and science, where students are working with robots, dissecting owl pellets, um, and all kinds of cool things um, that they get to do with hands-on projects. Kindergartens are working on writing skills, and middle school parent conferences begin next week. So we make sure everybody knows that. That's part of student achievement, and see where your students, how your students are doing. Climate and culture, Martin Luther King lessons and activities occurred over the last couple of weeks in our schools. It's been great to see. You'll see some highlights on our video. Our high, our high school open house was held for middle school students and parents. The board received brochures tonight. Uh, that was a great event. It was well attended. And we were um, all out in terms of activities. And uh, the supervisors overseeing the different academies and the new concentrations. We had a great attendance that night of parents and students. It was very, very exciting to see. Students of the week are being honored through our Renaissance program. A great con kindness challenge is going on at Miller. Winter concerts, um, and thank you board members who have attended some through over the last couple of weeks, have been going on, middle school and high school and Miller school. And EHT, every hand together, is up here to remind me to share about an incident that happened in our school district on Friday. Um, on Friday, we lost power at the Davenport Complex, and um, I was informed early, in, about 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning, that the situation would take four to five hours to resolve, and the students and teachers would be without heat, and would not be able to have lunch. So we had to make some decisions, quick decisions, and uh, a few phone calls to principals, a few phone calls to transportation, food services, and let me tell you, when I talk about all hands together, everybody jumping in, stepping in, making it happen, we were able to move the students from the Davenport Complex to our sister schools, the Fernwood Avenue Middle School, and the high school, where they accepted these students with open arms, provided them a place where they could be warm, entertainment, and, and conto video, 
and served them lunch. Put them back on the buses, got them back to the Davenport complex where they finished their half day of school and they got on their buses and got home safely, all safely. And Mrs. White and I had a conversation yesterday and this is what makes it even better. And she said, you know, Dr. Guccio, the students were very, very excited. They had a great time. This one little student said, that was an awesome field trip to a really big school that had a theater and a restaurant. So appreciate what we have, uh, appreciate what we do, but I, I am so proud of, from the students, to the teachers, to the administration, to the directors, to my central office, to security, everybody was involved. We had only what, a couple of students returned to our talents program. Um, parents were, were informed, and it, it ended up being a good day. So kudos to all, and I just had to brag about that wonderful moment. Um, community partnerships. Our FBLA held its summit at the high school last week. Um, it, it was a great event. I had shared this with the board uh, before that our, the vice president, uh, Ms. Patel, is um, the uh, vice president of the FBLA for the state, and she facilitated the meeting. We had dignitaries there, the mayor was there, um, we had an assemblyman there, the senator there, so it was a good event for the students to be able to network, and they did projects right, at, right through our high school through video chat, so it was awesome. Parents Club fundraiser is going on, and some resources here that I'd like to share. Atlantic Prevention Resources Strengthening the Family is offering a program. You, uh, you can find that through our uh, district newsletter. And the New Jersey CAP Program for Child Assault and Prevention and Anti-Bullying has partnered enough uh, uh, for a resource for our parents and students. Okay, our COVID-19 update. We have positive cases right now district-wide about 1,140. Um, amongst the staff, there's 345 cases, students almost 800 cases. Our cor current quarantine uh, due to positive cases right now in close contact, we have 32 staff members right now and 128 students on quarantine. I just want to remind everybody that the quarantine uh, regulations have changed to five days. We turn um, on that six day fever free. Um, and you know, that's, that's, that goes along with our policy as well. If you have a fever, you should not be in school for at least 24 hours until that fever um, has subsided. <clears throat> um, fully vaccination status has changed. That now includes having your booster, stat your booster shot. And hats off to our school nurses throughout this whole thing um, have really, really worked hard. You know, they have their daily jobs of Band-Aids and you know, tender loving care that they, they administer each and every day. But on top of that, they're contact tracing, they're receiving um, cases, they're speaking to parents, they're entering data, they're communicating with the Atlanta County Department of Health and knowing that regulations from the New, Jer New Jersey Department of Health change every two to three days. So to keep up on the standards and the guidelines and be able to apply that and communicate that, um, it is a whole lot of work that's going on and we appreciate their efforts. And wrapping up COVID-19 and update, our school pandemic response team meetings are scheduled for the first week of February. They will be reviewing the new guidelines. They will be reviewing the school status for COVID and also the PPE that we have in place. Their, that feedback will go to the district pandemic team about a week later, and then um, maybe some new decisions will be made. Maybe some things will stay the same, but whatever we have to report in March to the Department of Education, what our school safety plan is, okay? We did, we did that in September, we have to do that again in March. So we'll be prepared to do that. Okay, and at this time, um, I'd like to recognize our Board of Education. This month is School Board Recognition Month, okay? And um, each one of the board members have received their certificate of appreciation. And there is a resolution um, that I assign thanking and recognizing the board members for the time that they put in to our school district, the care that they have for our students, um, and to follow the mission of Embrace and Engage Educate each and every day. The meetings that they attend, the hard decisions that they have to make, um, all for a big salary of volunteer. So thank you all, we appreciate it, and New Jersey School Boards recognizes you, and we as a school district of Bay Harbor Township do the same, so thank you very much. Okay, and show you um, all of that um, is compiled into a video.
which I'm a visual person, and I really believe that it's very, very important for everyone to see the great things that go on in our school district each month. And I'll stand up here and say, <clears throat> we're 98% positive, 98% positive. Not everybody's perfect, but we always work on that 2% that maybe doesn't go right for us each, each month, each day. But we're always trying to be the best that we can. But when you see what we capture here and share and brag about and that you learn about that goes on in our schools, it really is hashtag EHT Pride. And that's in just a couple of weeks of being back since New Year's. So a whole lot going on, a whole lot to be proud of. Okay, real quick, we're going to go into something that we have to do. We have to do it because the state is telling us we have to present this information. The state is telling us we have to have it on the board agenda. So if we get checked for QSAC and other things, we did it. So we're checking the box, right? This is the Start Strong Assessment. It's a formative tool. It's to be used as a formative tool by us. But we are very fortunate that this school district has many formative tools in place. In fact, before we started off this school year, one thing we did last spring is we checked where are our kids? Where are they? What do they need when we start off in September? And we prepared with resources and professional development to be ready when we accepted the students of September. Not all school districts did that. So I understand. Why, this, why the state perhaps had this in place to make sure they held districts accountable. But we went above and beyond. But we, we participated, all right? So it's a formative tool. Is it valid? Is there validity? Well, we're, we're checking on the previous year's uh, knowledge. Um, the time of the testing was in September. Kids still have sand in their toes and some of them hadn't even been in school for over a year and a half because they were all virtual students. And this assessment is really not predictive of future proficiency. Um, was it timely and relevant data, I ask? I don't think so. But the impacts of COVID-19 on our students, on our teachers, on our district, I don't, I don't think it's, it's valid data. But anyway, we, we participated because it was something we were mandated to do. So we're checking a box tonight to check a box. Ms. Moss is going to give you uh, information on that. Before so, um, <clears throat> these slides are from the state of New Jersey. They were given to us to use as guidance in the presentation. 
And I just want to point out that when we were publicly reporting this assessment, for everybody to consider the impacts of COVID-19 on learning and testing, as well as the impact of student participation in these assessments. Also, districts should not compare any individual student data that, was, that is gleaned from this assessment to any state level data for, strong, for Start Strong, nor should it make any comparisons New Jersey Learning Standard data. Please note that these assessments are not, not designed to predict future student performance and was not designed to estimate what score a student would have received if they participated in New Jersey Student um, Learning Assessment in the spring of 2021. So I want to make that point that that is the case. And Ms. Moss is going to share the results with you, results that we're not going to ignore, results, results that we will take into consideration, but we also have data, we also have resources that we do assessments daily in our school district. Therefore, we know where our students stand and what our students need. It's January, okay? We we're engaged in that process and we're proud to do so. Ms. Moss. Thank you. So as Dr. Gruccio just um, explained, these assessments were given in the fall of 2021. Um, they were tested, and I'll show you a chart in a, sec in, a, in a minute, where it talks about the standards of previous year's learning. So it was really looking at standards that should have been taught in the previous year, looking at certain skills. Um, we got the individual student um, teachers had access to see how their classes did pretty quickly. We were able to get that into our data warehouse system of Link It to use as part of our universal screening process. But there are a lot of disclaimers with this of to not use it as a form of proficiency, but just as an indicator of where some students might need more support. So that is a really important piece of this. It didn't drill down to the level that we get from the state assessment. It didn't even drill down to the level that we get from our local assessments. It really was just these three categories of less support may be needed, some support may be needed, and strong support may be needed. So again, um, that information, while it did help us in gleaning, maybe just comparing what we already had to what we know, it really wasn't anything new to us. And that's because, as Dr. Gruccio mentioned, we already started proactively looking at this last year. We have universal screening that we do within our school district. We organized vertical articulations last year between teachers in each content and grade levels. So eighth grade teachers knew what the seventh grade teachers had covered. So seventh grade teachers knew what the sixth grade teachers had covered. And they met together in groups, they went over those standards, and then they had PLC time then amongst themselves to think about how that affected the curriculum starting this year. So we were prepared and knew what our students were gonna look like coming in. We then also do our own universal screeners three times a year to help us determine what we need our, for our students and to target supports. So based off what we had in the spring, we had targeted summer programs. Those summer programs through our ESSER funding, which we presented um, back in October, you'll see, continued for the next three summers. So we're gonna to continue to use our data to help our students. We also have our RTI services that we provide in grades one to eight and pull out services. Um, we also used our ESSER money to get building interventionists to help with the tier two interventions in the classroom to support our teachers with this differentiation, looking at this varying skills and to be able to support them in that way. We're continuing with our professional development um, our math teachers are receiving um, professional development on how to use daily formative assessment to group students and to be able to look at those varying skills and make sure that we're successful in that way. Uh, our built-in PLCs into our calendar. We have a Link It intervention manager now that complements our intervention and our data collection. Uh, we've invested and worked on um, professional development around INRS. We have a new INRS homework club at middle schools working on not just completing homework, but looking at those missing skills and what students need and providing those services. Of course, we have full day pre-K and kindergarten now to hopefully help <laughs> expedite our learning. Um, and as I mentioned, a lot of this was already planned in last year's budget, continued through this fall when we did the SR3 grant, which we presented to the board in October. So again, the Start Strong was designed as prioritized prior year academic standards. Um, 
It was a quick 45 minute assessment um, just to capture and gain. So it didn't go in that normal depth and breadth that you would get on a normal state assessment. It was just a glance, a snapshot. So here's that chart I was telling you about. So if you're in grade four, the content of the assessment was grade three um, and so on and so forth. Um, if you were in geometry, you took the grade eight math, grade eight math. And if you're in algebra two, you took algebra one. So um, they continue with the considerations. They gave us a lot of slides to take that in with a grain of salt um, to make sure that we're looking at this to evaluate our own curriculum. But we already had done that. We continue to do that. We continue to do that monthly in PLCs. We did it over the summer, and we continue to do curriculum work. Our whole professional day in March is dedicated to curriculum work for these reasons. So. Here are the reports. Here are the number of students that we tested in each area. Um, so we have ELA and math, and then science tested in grades six, nine, and 12. Here are the numbers and percentages of students in each where, like I said, the categories were more support needed, some support needed, and less support needed. So it really just put kids into those three categories. Um, teachers were able to access their own groups of students to see where they fell, and then we also have it in Link It, so they're able to see that um, at any time to compare to their other assessments that they have. Um, here's math. Um, they also give another disclaimer on here that math eight outcomes are a little bit iffy because you have kids that are taking geometry that are taking it, kids that are taking algebra. We have kids in the middle school, kids in the high school. So it is a little bit difficult sometimes for that math to correlate because of the sequence of the math courses of algebra, geometry, algebra two. And then here are our science results. And then we, broke, um, we did break it into our subgroups. Uh, we did notice that it remained pretty consistent across the board as far as our percentages are concerned across our subgroups. Um, the main points where we saw a little bit of discrepancy across it was um, within science, which is not surprising, it's very technical reading for our students. So we'll continue to look at that more closely with our, with our local assessments to see if those subgroups remain the same as we work through that. And that concludes the reporting out on this. Okay, hey, Mrs. Salagi, that concludes Superintendent's report for January. Thank you, Ms. Moss and Dr. Grigio. Um, now is our student reps report. Tell us what's going on in the high school. So to start, on January 10th, high school seniors in the Medical Science Academy participated in the Health Sciences programs at Stockton University. This was a great way for MSA students to learn about different health-related fields. This week, as Dr. Guccio mentioned, the Miller School is participating in the Great Kindness Challenge. This is a proactive and positive bullying prevention initiative, which has plenty of fun activities for students, including themed dress-up days. The high school students of the week for last week were Luis Alvarez Guzman, nominated by Ms. Law, and Malia Brown, nominated by Ms. Irwin. A big congratulations to the 100 high school students who completed the syllabi literacy assessment last week. A total of 11 different language, languages were tested on. Mr. House and his environmental class were featured in NJEA review this month. The article is titled, An Outdoor Classroom Inspires Students at Egg Harbor Township High School, and it's a great read. <laughs> And lastly, Davenport did many activities to honor Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, just one example is Mrs. Le, uh, LaPausson's first grade students. They were interested in reading and writing about Martin Luther King Jr. And pictures of their projects can be found on Davenport's weekly newsletter. Um, I have some of the sports updates. So just this month, EHT took first place at Bergen County Women's Coaches Associ Association Invitational for wrestling. That's really a mouthful. And they also face Ocean City tomorrow for wrestling. Um, also, as some of you may have seen, EHT Boys Basketball has really been on a roll. 
and just recently won against both St. Joe's and Mainland, um, as well as the girls track team this month, um, winning in their 4x200 relay at the SJTCA meet, and the swim team just having their senior night for both boys and girls. Thank you. Okay, now it's time for public comment. And the board values and welcomes comments and opinions from the residents. This meeting will now be open to the public. Comments are three minutes per person on agenda items only. If your question pertains to litigation, student or personnel items, please see the superintendent after the meeting as the board does not discuss these matters in public. Depending on the nature and complexity of your questions, the board secretary may ask for your contact information so that someone can get back to you with a response. As a reminder, this is a public meeting and all comments should be appropriate for a public setting and made in a respectful manner. If you'd like to address the board, please come to the microphone and state your name and address. Okay, moving on. Okay, we don't have um, committee reports. I guess Dr. Shaw, do you want to do anything in public on personnel? Or no, it's finance. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, Ms. Anaya. Sure, thank you, Mrs. Salagi. So there was no committee report for a committee meeting. We we're looking to have our first meeting next month. Um, however, on Friday, the board received their agenda and they were able to go through the items and ask any questions for clarification for tonight's vote. So I just wanted to report out in the finance and ops area. We did have two questions. First on the bills list for Western Pest Services. Um, the two payments um, were dated in January. However, it was for December and for January and the amounts are equal because we do have monthly pest maintenance. We do um, district wide. The second question was uh, policy 6421. W.B. Mason uh, for 33,000 in Shields. Um, this was our second large order for Shields um, for replacement for damaged and um, additional Shields needed for school classrooms and cafeterias. Um, the purchase was already made. Um, policy 6421, Section B, allows us to continue with the process, um, of continuing with the education process without holding up purchases prior to board approval. So that's what that is. Thank you. Okay. I have a question, if I may. Okay. About the um, bills for payment. I just had one quick one about the um, GPS tracking for buses. Um, it's a $95 bill and the PO number is 2052. The question is, for the $95, how many buses have the GPS tracking for the $95? No problem, thank you. Um, so this is a, with a agreement with Verizon. We did a pilot with five of our buses. Uh, we currently maintain the five buses only. We have a fleet of about 120, 130 at the, on the road that rotate. The reason we kept the five as a good practice is if there's an issue with um, timing of a run, if a parent has a uh, concern with the run may be too long or um, there's always you know um, a delay here or there, the bus is staying too long at a stop, we'll say, you know what, driver, why don't you switch out buses with us? Let's take a look for a couple of days and just see how this run is going. So it, could those bu five buses do rotate. They're not the same drivers all the time. But we find it beneficial um, just when we have to do studies like that. So we do keep maintain on just five buses. Okay, so it's for five buses. And can they be, um, can the GPS units be moved bus to bus or are they permanently attached to the bus? Permanently attached to those five buses. Okay, thank you. And it was like mighty expensive for just five if for our fleet. You know, that's just a monthly payment, so it would be that, you know, that's a lot. So we just kept the five. Okay. Can I have a motion for transfer 7.2? Motion. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mrs. Bongiorno. If there's another mic active, just please check that. Go ahead. Oh, there you go. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mrs. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. 
Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Seppi? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. And Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Thank you. Okay. A motion for 7.3 to 7.20. Motion. Second. Discussion? I got you, Mr. Price. Everybody's quick on it. He just seconded the motion. I told him uh, I heard him. Okay. He didn't, he wasn't, him. yeah. Any discussion? Okay. okay. Mrs. We'll Bongiorno? Abstain to 7.3 P978. Yes to the rest. If you can please repeat that, I'm sorry. Abstain to 7. 7.3 P is okay. in Paul 978. And yes to the rest. Thank you very much. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Seppi? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. And Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Okay, curriculum. Uh, there's no committee meet, but Ms. Moss, do you have something? Madam President, I have a comment on curriculum. I think there's a couple of items that we are going to vote on tonight. Okay, can Ms. Moss talk about okay, her we, report? Well, we're going to meet February 15th, and I spoke with uh, Ms. Moss about a couple of things that were on here, and we went over, and maybe she can just um, elaborate that a, a little further so that you know what you're voting on tonight. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I also did have a few questions that came in from the board that I will um, report out on now. There were some questions about the Start Strong presentation, mainly around how the district is doing work to catch students up and how we're funding it. Um, I hope that that was answered through the presentation. Um, but again, we are working on this all the time. We uh, are looking at the data. We presented that through our SR3. Um, process to the committees and then to the board on how we're continuing to look at students and design programs around it. So um, you also will see through the local budget uh, from all the supervisors and you saw those presentations last week how we're continuing to add in resources to help our students continue to grow. Um, I did also link that SR3 um, presentation in those responses for the new board members if you didn't have the opportunity to see it when we did it. The other question that came in was about the program of studies. Um, there is a change in there um, about class rank and the, the process and procedures around the reporting out. So the process and procedures are that upon request of an institution that's requiring class rank or would like to see it, that that would be submitted directly to the university or college upon that request, starting with our current junior class. Um, so this process has been in motion with those juniors already since they began high school. Okay. Thank you. All right. I have a motion for 8.2 to 8.5. So made. Second. Oh, anybody have a second? Second. Any All right. Discussion? I have a quick question. Okay. Sorry. Um, with going back to um, the ESSER funds, I think maybe this the presentation tonight for the Start Strong. Um, is there some that you mentioned the I and RS homework club in the middle school? Is that something that intervention can maybe be brought over to the high school for any ninth through eleventh graders that might still be struggling with, you know, homework or math um, or English tests that they might have not done so well on that need a little extra help? Is that something that we could maybe consider? Ms. Moss, do you want to comment on that? Because you do have INS and also the learning labs as well. Yeah, so we have a, a quite a few things built in already at the high school. We do have a math and English tutoring center that's open every block of every day um, that has math or English and English teacher in there. So students can go down if they have a study hall or during lunch or during class even and get that extra help at their own um, will or teachers sometimes you know suggest that they go down and get that help. 
We also have um, Math and English Lab, which is um, an intervention for students that get put into there for a semester at a time um, to help work on those skills, so students that need that, that bit of extra help. We do have INRS teams in all of our schools. We just did a lot of professional development around that. And so we're continuing to work on how to help continue to support our students. So um, we'll continue to look at what students would want to participate in and help with that in that arena. But those two things are built into the day already for our students so that they're able to get the help that they need. Thank you. Roll call. Mrs. Bongiorno. There you go. Okay. Yes. Mr. Della Barca. Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. Yes. Ms. Hyman. Yes. Mr. Ireland. Yes. Mr. Price. Yes. Mr. Seppi. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. And Mrs. Salagi. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Personnel. Well, Personnel committee has not met. Well, we did meet, but. Um, you have something for for public? I do not have anything for public, Madam President. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, I need a motion for 9.2 to 9.7. Second. Discussion? What? Discussion? Roll call. Mrs. Bongiorno? Yes. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Seppi? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Sloggy? Yes. Okay. So it gives me great pride to present to you for the very first time in public our new Egg Harbor Township School District employees. And I'll begin with Cheris Gianetti, guidance counselor at the high school, <laughs> former EHT grad. Kelly Sturdevant, guidance counselor, Alder Avenue Middle School, welcome. Chad Sabat, security guard, Miller School. Kashan Davis, security guard for the district. And Marlene Padilla, custodian at the high school. Congratulations and welcome aboard. Yes, welcome. Okay. New business. If, if you want to leave, you may. You're not, not, not obligated to stay, but you can if you want to. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good luck. Okay, the um, new business, the district calendar has been revised and the last day of school is now June 24th. Is there anything? Um, I guess we need a motion on 10.1 to 10.2. So made. Second. Discussion? Second. Discussion? Okay, roll call. Mrs. Bongiorno? Yes. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Seppi? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. And Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Okay. For communications, Mr. Della Barca, you want to tell us about New Jersey School Boards? Thank you. Uh, I have the honor of serving as president of the Atlanta County School Board Association. Our next meeting is Thursday, February 10th 
It will be a virtual meeting. I believe the topic is going to be career and technical education student programs, but that will be confirmed when you get your invitation. Each of you, all the board members, will be invited to this meeting as all of the county uh, members of Board of Education are invited also. Um, just a reminder that an access to the New Jersey School Board Association's virtual workshop has been extended to this Friday. So if you would like to go back and um, maybe you missed something back in October, you can still go online and uh, participate in that program. Also, uh, Mr. Ireland and I participated in the county leadership web meeting that was held uh, about two Fridays ago. The guest speaker at that time was our executive director of the New Jersey School Board Association, Dr. Larry Feinside. I think most of you know by now that Ms. Dr. Feinside has submitted his uh, retirement and he will be retiring as of July 1. So he was a guest speaker at the meeting and basically he reviewed his uh, 10 years of service. Uh, he thanked everyone <laughs> in the state that has any kind of connection with School Boards Association. And the persons who were in attendance that evening were really very complimentary and, and loving to Mr. Feinstein, and I believe they were true uh, as Dr. Feinstein, because uh, he has really done an outstanding job for our association. He's made the New, School, New Jersey School Board Association uh, known in the state amongst all of the relevant associations that are in existence, and especially to the uh, legislators in the governor's department. So he's done a really fine job. Uh, the current president of the uh, School Board Association will be appointing a committee to research the next person to try to fill Dr. Feinstein's shoes, which I think is going to be a big challenge. Um, that's all at this time, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. Okay, old business. We need to affirm HIB and DH determination. Motion. Motion. Second. Was that Mr. Ireland and Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? Okay, roll call. Mrs. Bongiorno? Yes. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Seppi? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. And Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Okay, it's uh, public comment, the second public comment. Anybody have anything they'd like to say? Come to the microphone, state your name and address, please. Good evening, um, my name is Amanda Snell, 18 Pinedale Avenue. Um, I've been waiting for a meeting that might be short and sweet to come up and talk to you about this because it's been um, on my mind for a while since the start of the um, pandemic. I think uh, this change took place, so I was kind of waiting for things to calm down a bit, but I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm here to ask any of the board members that are on the curriculum committee to, um, and especially we have new members, to please discuss and investigate two issues that I find extremely important to my children's education. The first being that we no longer have our um, weekly spelling tests and spelling words. Um, I've read a lot of the research behind it and I understand that um, you know, we are focusing more on phonemic awareness in the classroom. Um, but, and I don't have all the time in the world to talk about it. Um, so I hope uh, if you can look at it in your own, on your own time. Um, one of the quotes that I found from readingrockets.org just um, says that 50% of the words in the English language have their sounds and letter associations mapped simply and perfectly. These words don't have to be memorized. About 40% are easily learned through instruction of slightly more complex letter sound correspondences. Only about 10% of English language words are truly exceptional and they need to be memorized. So with that, 50% of English words need to be somehow taught and the 10% have to be memorized 10% have to be memorized, but it has to be taught. And we need those spelling tests back to see if what the teachers are teaching, because I understand they are still teaching spelling, but we, you, don't, you get no feedback if, if the children really understand the patterns of 
of the spelling um, that they're learning in the class. Not to mention, um, it, there's so many benefits from it for the younger children that they can study at home with their family and on Friday they get their test and I understand not everybody is a good speller and they're not going to be happy with their with but you know it gives you something to work towards at the end of the week that has traditionally been something that you work at home with your family and study and prepare for. Um, we've all seen how horrendous spelling has become in text messaging and quick emails, um, and it's going to get worse and worse. So I think that this has to be um, looked at. Um, the second issue, just briefly, is that um, ebb and flow um, with education. I, I find the one, two, three, four grading system. When I discuss these with my younger kids, they really have a hard time understanding, and I can only imagine what many parents, you know, they don't, they, they um, you know, it's so new, and I understand that we're trying to, there's so much that has been out there to see, you know, to understand it, but um, especially since they go back in sixth grade to the A, B, C, D, and get see a percentage, um, I think that is also something that should be discussed, but that's okay. all you. I have. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, my name is Fred Hare. If you can please hit the microphone if you don't mind and just state your name and address. There, on the base, there's a, a button on the base. On? My name's Fred Hare, 108 Flatbush. This is my second year living in the district. I moved in in 2020, September 2020. And I, I think you're all doing a good job. Look like a lot of positive things going on. I don't know if I'm supposed to wait and talk to the super after this meeting. I have a problem. My grandson over at Alder Avenue is having issues over there and it's not being addressed satisfactorily. Could, would you like to wait until after the meeting uh, sure. and, and speak to the superintendent? Sure. Okay, that'd be fine. All Thank right. You. Thank you. Okay. Is there any comments from the administration or the board members? Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say that um, it was great to have our student reps here today. You did a great job. And I did hear them mention um, Davenport School. Um, some of the things that were going on there. And I know um, uh, last year we talked about, or at least I, I mentioned that, I would definitely love to see, I know they talk about mainly what happens at the high school, but just how we can broaden it so that we're hearing from the lower elementary schools, Miller and then the middle schools, just to, I don't know how we can include that in, in the report or if there's like a, and I mean, maybe a far stretch, but um, a student rep, from each, you know, maybe from each of the younger schools, the lower elementary schools, um, just how they meet at the high school and they get information. Maybe that can be something that can be a project for the other schools and maybe they could send their report. I think that'd be a good experience for, um, for our students, just how to get involved and so we can know some of the things. And I know we get a report as board members, you know, about what's happening in each of the schools, but just something that could be shared publicly. I think that'll be, that was just one of the things that I discussed last year. And um, the other thing was in the report for, um, for the strong assessment, start strong. Um, when they say economically disadvantaged, and, and I'm assuming, but it's to make sure is that that's based on uh, free and reduced lunch only. Is that what? Can you repeat the question? Okay. <laughs> the economically disadvantaged, you know, we had the students with um, disabilities, economically disadvantaged. I said, is that based off of free and reduced lunch that's information? A, that's a loaded question. Was that part of something for today? Like, economically disadvantaged can mean several things. Okay. So, is it part of your data? Is that why? Okay. So, I'm not sure what that to the state might consider economically disadvantaged. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. My understanding is that they take it from the data that you submit when you um, on the your smart ID number and based on free and reduced. 
That's my understanding for it, and that um, that's how they get that data. But I'm sure the district can go ahead and check. I just happen to have sat through a lot of these presentations in the past week and two weeks, so yes. that's the information I've heard. Okay. Because I know we usually have our subgroups identified. They could be economic disadvantage. They could be free, based off of free and reduced lunch. They could be based off of race. They could be based off of different things. And I just was wondering what was all included in EHT's definition or of economically disadvantaged. So that's what I was just trying to, and that could be something we. Sounds discuss. like it's the same for every school district. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And Ms. Okay. Moss, I, can, I guess we could talk about that. Okay. Thank you. And um, Go ahead. I think that was, I think that was it. And um, I just, and I do, um, Ms. I know we're not talking to, talking to you, but I was going to say that Ms. Snell, um, I just really um, did enjoy her perspective on the spelling and and sharing her concerns. And I'm, I had to say this, and I know people always give it, but the handwriting, I, you know our children, they definitely need work on their handwriting because they, they're of the text generation. So I can definitely understand what you're saying. Thank you for sharing that. Go ahead. I just wanted to um, give a shout out. The, during the course of the year, we do uh, a lot of drills for different things fire drills, uh, evacuations, but um, I don't think we've ever really practiced as big as the evacuation was on Friday. And as Dr. Burchio said, everybody stepped up and the kids actually had a ball doing it. So, you know, when something is frightening, all the employees, everybody that was involved actually turned it into a positive with the students. And I thank you for that, Dr. Burchio. Can only, I can only <laughs> give direction, and it's, I got to give credit to the staff that carried it out and made it happen, and you know put these children at ease. So I'm very proud of them, and I, I thank them. So thank you. Okay. Ladies, it was nice seeing you guys tonight, and thank you for your report. Okay, I have a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Here we go. Thank you.